Hi guys, um, Steph Elton here again. Yeah, if you've just seen the last video, that was just about half a second ago. <laughs> I'm kidding, half a second ago, I didn't do that. Anyway, glasses are gone, so if the camera's a bit uncoordinated tonight. <laughs> anyway, another play I'm doing is, like I said in my other video, Hard to Swallow by Mark Wheeler, and it's an adaption from Catherine by uh, Maureen Dunter. And I think the publication of it is DBCA, if I'm not quite sure what it is. <coughs> There's a picture of Mark Wheeler on the back with a bit of a description. Um, to a description too hard to swallow. And yeah, I'm sort of having a lot of <laughs> And also it says about um, when it was first played. Uh, to, and it was played uh, since its successful performance by King Tom Jackson at the Royal National, Theatre, Royal National Theatre London as part of the Lloyds Bank National Theatre Challenge in 1989. Pretty much, um, it's been performed all over uh, all over the world. I mean, it, I think it says here in the book it's been performed in countries like Australia. Zealand, uh, I think in Canada as well. And uh, also in here it's got an introduction to it's got an introduction to Maureen Dunter, who um, wrote Catherine. And also Catherine was actually made into a film. The book was actually made into a film. Um, and also there's an introduction, I think, to Yeah, pretty much from Catherine Dunbar. But sorry, Maureen Dunbar, and that was written on the 29th of January 2000. And also in here is actually a poem that was uh, believed to be written by Catherine from Hampshire. And so there's lots of things to find in here, um, in this book, in this particular printing. Uh, there's stuff about the play. Um, that was written by Mark Wheeler. You know, so pretty much um, it talks about, it pretty much explains about the play and what it's actually based on. And what I haven't actually sat down and read it all, but it, I think the gist of it is, is basically it's what the story is about and, and what it hopes to raise awareness. And uh, also in here there's actually some help playing because this play is um, if you've e if actually if, e if anybody else has read other Mark Wheeler plays like Too Much Punch for Judy and Lethal Weapon of Chicken, they're all educational plays, so serious and educational plays. And this is all about anorexia because Catherine is a get anorexia and of course she doesn't um, this story, <coughs> the play, is just basically the story, it's based on a true story, and it's when, it's um, the story of uh, Maureen and John, and their children Catherine, Anne, and Simon, and it's the journey that they go through with Catherine's anorexia, John's first diagnosis up until her death. So, pretty much, there's stuff in there that's also very theoretical, uh, or physiological, like the Billy Goat Gruff scene, which is actually based on the event. So pretty much Baby Goat, that Mummy and Daddy Goat are Maureen and John. Baby Goat, you know, is Catherine. And the play then, in Crossing the Bridge. Crossing the Bridge is the representation of getting over anorexia. The play pen represents the anorexia holding baby goat back. And there's Joe the goat who is Patricia, who is a, who was a friend of um, Catherine who inspired and Catherine inspired her to get over her anorexia. She, so she makes it over the bridge while baby goat remains in the pen because Catherine never got over her anorexia. <laughs> and 
pretty much the um, characters of Mummy and Daddy Kane depict John and Maureen, like the daddy joke saying, you know, open the door, cross the bridge, in a very stern way saying, you know, oh, there's something like that. And his character or whatever, and being very quick with um, character and being sort of ignorant of the world. Anyway, hmm. pretty much, um, this play is sort of done in a, it's not naturalistic, because they sort of say stuff that you wouldn't actually say in normal conversation. Like they have after the Chris, uh, after the Billy Goat, well, after everyone sh- go, after the narrator, Mummy and Daddy go cross the bridge. Everybody then says Christmas 1973, and um, <clears throat> and then they talk about Christmas Day, five o'clock in the morning, wakey wakey, and uh, that sort of thing. And pretty much it is done in a, a sort of Bell Cold Brett style. And if anybody hasn't heard of Bell Cold Brett, go look him up because um, he's a very interesting character. So, um, he created the style of theatre called Epic Theatre. And pretty much this does give you an idea of what Epic Theatre is. So if you're not quite sure, so wait, style or whatever, just read this. It gives you a very plain idea. And we actually did this as our SMT when I was on the level two diploma at the College of Culture, or Diploma in Performing Arts. And uh, we did it in a very physical theatre style. We didn't have like proper wings or whatever. We were always on the stage as actors like in a circle of chairs and then we just put the costume on in front of the audience and then get up and do our thing. So with Brett, that is a very Brexian thing to change characters on the stage and put your costume on in front of them instead of going off stage so on. Because with that, he wanted you to remember it was a play. He didn't want you to be hypnotised by the storyline and this beautiful set. We had a very basic set. I mean, we had, like, pictures and also pictures to do with our lecture. And also we had pictures of people like um, uh, Karen Carpenter, Lena Zavaroni, and other people like that who actually were... You know, who suffered from anorexia, very famous people that suffered from anorexia and mimosa, <coughs> which is what happened to them. Pretty much, um, you know, so, but also with the reason why Brecht did that, had limited set, props, and costumes to basically strip the play of its skin to display a bare skeleton because he wanted to. to Focus on the play. He didn't want you to be hypnotized. He didn't want you to say, Ooh, what a magical world. He wants you to think at the back of your mind, this is just a play. Because he wanted you to think about what the characters were doing. He didn't want you to come away and think, Oh, I thought the story was interesting and the special effects were amazing. He wanted you to think about the characters and the storyline. He didn't want you to think, Oh, the acting is good, the special effects. I really like the set. They have very good detail. They wanted you to think, why did that character say that? Why didn't they step in when they should have? Wait, they had the opportunity to, but why didn't they do anything? That's what he wants you to think, not, oh, I thought the was You know. So, in some sense, when we did the play, we had, um, there were some bits where we had props, and there were scenes where we made ourselves into props, like when we made the car, and when we made the car for the scene where Maureen has to go out and get um, Brussels sprouts for the cafe. And then there was scenes basically in the play. Um, oh, where is it? Where is it? Well, basically, um, Talk amongst yourself for a moment. Sorry, I just forgot that I was on camera for a moment. Um, what, what, what is it? There's actually, a, I'll, I'll tell you what it is. There's a scene in here where pretty much the uh, characters Catherine, Maureen, and John are actually. Um, 
are pretty much done with other people reading the lines and manipulating the main characters like puppets. So like, <laughs> there's a bit in the script where basically it said that Molly needs to get away from her family. So we had the person, the puppeteer, move the person as in like, to show they were exhausted and needed, you know, time to move away. And they actually moved and walked. The puppeteers actually walked the people about. But I think, you know, but I think you need to find it, hopefully, because I haven't been able to find it. <laughs> but basically, in some way, you make, like, like, with the atmosphere that we had, when we had the circle of chair, we were actually watching the play, so the actors would be watching the play and reacting. And also we'll be doing sound effects and certain things, where there's a bit where Catherine tries to commit suicide, and there's a bit where she goes, our father falls in heaven, and as she collapses, our people, our actors on the chairs have to go, no, like that, as in she's just, you know, because we're reacting with her, and you wouldn't have actors do that, well, you wouldn't have actors on the stage if they're not in the scene, I mean, you know, and that sort of thing, but, um, you know, but I think, in general, this is a very good play, and I was thinking about, I was thinking about this earlier on, but, you could actually do this play on a very low, if you were on a very low budget, I mean, with this, it did require a lot of props, but like little tiny bits of props that we lifted from the play. But some of them were like um, pictures that we had as props, like pictures, literally from like the studio. Um, you know, but you could do this on a very low budget. Also, it, this would make a very good, uh, I say play, a very good touring production because actually at the beginning of play, when oh, uh, here we go. <clears throat> the list of characters like that, like that. It actually says that this production has. Yeah, I'll read what it says up here. The play has thirty-two characters, thirty-one characters, six females. Three males and 22 characters of either sex can be performed by five, three females and two males with doubling. So pretty much like uh, when I went to see a production of uh, Too Much Punishment, Judy and Legal Weapon, we had the actors. There were about five actors, and they had um, and they all played different parts. So in such, because it actually says here. With careful doubling, hard to swallow, can be performed with five actors. So that okay, there it shows you who can play what characters. So, for instance, female one is Baby and Captain. Female two is Maureen and Money. Female three, Joe, Anna, News One, Doctor Wynn, Nurse Blackman, Samantha, Samantha. Double yellow line, Maureen number two, because there's an extra line for Maureen. Um, diary one, Patricia, miscellaneous prop. And then male one, Daddy, John, news two, Dr. Clay, observer one, police one, diary two, miscellaneous prop. And then male two, narrator, troll, Simon, news three, charge nurse. Well, I think charge nurse Curtis, Kenny, psych, psychotherapist, observer two, police two, diary three, miscellaneous props. But when we did it <coughs> on the level two, there was actually a lot of people, so there was enough to actually split the characters. So the characters I played, once again, I had small parts. I was heading towards Maureen, but unfortunately, I didn't get to her. I was kind of upset, but I'm happy. Uh, <coughs> anyway, so I played the narrator, Maury number two, and I was a doctor, and then miscellaneous props and other characters as well. But definitely, it's one of these really good plays that would definitely, if you can get with this, get into performance quality work, it can really make people sing. And also with these plays, 
which you can do really good workshops with people related to eating disorders, health eating, that sort of thing. So I've seen um, a theatre group, an uh, ethic theatre group called Ape Theatre, who have performed, who I've seen perform Mark Weir plays. And I believe that, you know, the performance quality is very good. It really makes me think, like, when I saw too much punch, punch for Judy, it actually did make me have second thoughts about it, because when you look at scenarios like a car crash caused by drink driving, or anything like that, it's amazing how some of these things can destroy people's lives, or, you know, by if they're still alive and they get really bad memories and just their lives absolutely screwed up by that incident, or losing someone's eyes. And it can be the most simplest thing in the world, a mobile phone, alcohol. And also, with anorexia, anything can trigger it. It's amazing what things can trigger it off. You know, like, pretty much it can be, pretty much it could be strictness, like, John's very strictness. And there's a scene where Catherine, Maureen and John are having dinner. And John's saying, you know, you must eat at the table, otherwise you'll be punished, you know. And that can cause a lot. Especially if if you're naive about the fact they've got anorexia, but it still can you know cause that much problem. I mean, the fact that John says that he grew up with his grandparents in Liverpool in the Second World War, and they believed that you had to eat everything on your plate or else. But Maureen had a different upbringing that she was forced to have food and didn't like it, so she never tried to force feed the children. So it's amazing what can set things off, you know, what could actually trigger off something where, okay, you could be overly strict with your child and say you must eat this and otherwise like, you are just in big trouble and you go to extremes to punish them, but it can cause a lot. And actually it shows the display that many people just think of anorexia nervosa or anorexia bulimia or bulimia itself just to be a physical thing. Especially with anorexia, most people just think, I'll oh, just get them to eat and get them to gain weight and they'll recover. But it actually shows in here the side that is actually the fact that this isn't just a, a, an eating disorder. Um, you can't just get them just to eat and they'll be fine. It's actually a mental health issue. And the fact that Catherine gets sex in this. So I guess in some way it kind of does show that it's more than just an eating disorder. It's not just what goes on in the stomach. It's what goes on in the mind as well. Because pretty much your mind tells you to eat. It controls your stomach and the signals that your stomach gives to you. So basically, this anorexia is basically, you know, it what affects the mind. So there's no, I mean, you can force feed them all you like, but you need to sort out what's going on in here as well as what's going on in here in some sense. But, Anyway, I'm going to wrap this up because we're heading on towards 28. <coughs> so definitely, a really good read. Um, even if you don't end up doing the play, I do recommend you read it, along with other plays like Too Much Punch for Judy and Legal Weapon. I've seen those plays perform. I haven't read them, but these are really good. This is a really good play to read, and it will make you think. Definitely. So anyway, um, <coughs> so I hope to see you all again soon. Um, if you want to subscribe, uh, subscribe. Click the uh, click the button that says subscribe. If you want to leave questions for me about anything you want to know, um, clean, please and polite. Um, just put them in the comment section down below. And I hope to see you again soon with more blogs and and other things like that. Other play reviews. Hopefully, if I find more play reviews, or I might even do. Someone actually asked me, oh, do you think you'll do TV and book reviews? So, and that was posted, I think, by Film Buff 06, who I actually personally know. Which I might do, because there's actually a lot of films and things like that I would actually like to do. So, but I think I'll do them another day. Um, so anyway, hope to see you soon. This has been uh, Hard to Blow by Mark Miller. I've been Steph Dalton, and remember, stay dramatic. <laughs>